Good evening, anyone who's out there. Five people. Nice. Still trying to get used to how this all works uh, and what it looks like. It's kind of it's kind of weird on my end. Like I'm looking, I'm looking at the screen in my picture, and I, I think I'm supposed to be looking at the camera. So uh, bear with me as we go through this because I'll be looking here when I should be here, but then also <laughs> coming over here to, uh, and actually, I guess when somebody says hi, I can just say hi on here. So Michael, Rick, what's happening? Uh, welcome to some Friday entertainment, man. Crazy times we're in right now when at nine o'clock on a Friday night, we're uh, we're hanging out here on on YouTube, but what after watching Frozen two? So we had a family movie night. Uh, my son Dexter is four and almost four. He'll be four in May, and so uh, the routine's been a little bit different. So we had a little pizza night. Uh, it was grain free pizza, and watched Frozen two. So it was it was pretty cool. So definitely very unique time, but uh, I'm really glad that we have this platform to be able to do this, to interact and uh, uh, discuss things. You know, the wheelie video is something that uh, I was pretty excited about. Uh, I did one about a year and a half ago that went over pretty well and it was kind of something we did on a whim. So I wanted to do another one that was more in line with the how to's that we have been currently doing and uh, I, I was happy with how it worked out. You know, given some of the input I got from that first one, there were some things that I wanted to add with with this video. So, you know, the three tenets of it, I think, made sense and carried through. But I really wanted to focus on the uh, the part about using the torso and not using the legs to really power through. So I think the first one we did about 18 months ago with my man, Andy, that was more just a straightforward how to these, this is the technique. This one was more trying to get across to people what not to do or what some of the common problems that I see are. And I'm, I'm very quickly learning that I very quickly learned that, that in this YouTube space, you need to you need to do that and rick i don't know i i, <laughs> I didn't see what you said dude ribbing me uh the ted speed yeah <laughs> uh, you know you, we got to keep it light dude we're always trying to find places to make it a little bit more entertaining uh but not force it and it was funny because when i loaded everything up that morning i put that bike in there and i just thought there's got to be a way there's got to be a way we can work this thing in and that wasn't even me, dude. That was my man, Brock. Um, he, that was his vision, uh, good or bad. I don't know, but either way we, we put it in there and, um, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Far from Peter Sagan style. That dude, those things are not easy to wheelie on. They really aren't. Um, uh, and then trying to do it one handed, it got a little dicey too. I don't know if anybody noticed it, but I didn't realize it until I watched it in slow motion. When I went to go back, I almost missed um, on the first time. So yeah, without the tights, it was a bib. It was just a bib. Um, it was a cool bib, but, uh, we wanted to get the point across and I think that was the way to do it. So there was a couple people there at the park when we were filming, just kind of spread around a little bit. And I was looking around just thinking, man, I hope nobody calls the police or, or does anything crazy on this. So yeah, it was fun. You know, I, I, I liked it. I I'm really having a blast doing these videos. Uh, people have talked about it or alluded to it for a long time and it happened pretty quickly. And it's kind of in this weird state right now where, um, you know, the, the subscriber count blew up and then all of a sudden just fell on its face. And it's just weird. I, I don't understand. I started doing some research. It said 10,000 subscribers is kind of this this point, this threshold, but once you break through, it just starts growing and growing and growing. And it, for some reason it just hasn't. And I don't know if that has anything to do with algorithms or whatnot, but um, either way, um, trying to do everything I can to get it to grow, um, you know, to get it to grow in a position where we could entice 
some people to come in and help fund some of these videos because it's funny everybody's like dude the production value is amazing and <laughs> i mean it's i think it's really good but that comes with a cost so um, now with everything happening and the clinics not being able uh, to happen it's made it a little bit more difficult so but it's also made it more important so man it's it's right now is i think is key to have this stuff because the great thing about YouTube is you can reach this, this global audience. You know, the ride series is, man, the ride series is awesome. And it's so fun to have people there in front of me because I can see those moments. I can see them getting them. But with YouTube, you know, it's different. It's a totally different dynamic and it's exciting. It's fun. Uh, I've learned a lot and I didn't think about that. I never even thought, oh man, I'm going to, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to learn to be a better coach to be more understanding from it. And I really have, because I understand that, you know, I really have to be specific about what I mean. I have to choose my words carefully and I have to understand that people are going to take me very literally. So uh, it's definitely been uh, an incredible learning experience. It really has. And it's cool. It just, man, it makes the world such a small place. You know, when we went to the Sedona mountain bike festival, just walking around and, having people say things and say peace out dumpers. And it just, it was kind of surreal, but it was also, it was really fun. So uh, I appreciate it. Like everybody who's on here on this, on the right side of this live chat, all 35 people, I really appreciate it. Like it, it's, uh, it's something I care about. Uh, I try to get on and answer every comment I can. And I, I really try to think about how best to answer some of these questions. And that's part of what prompted this session was people saying, hey, you know, comparing to a manual and questions about seat height and stuff like that. So what I wanted was, um, all right, Chris, say any practice for 45 minutes and it worked. So I just wanted to, to kind of address that, that, you know, what is, what are my thoughts on the manual and the wheelie and, and kind of where they line up and we'll keep it We'll keep it simple. Um, I think a wheelie is much easier than a manual, and there are some there are some similarities, but I would categorize a manual as a constantly dynamic movement, and a wheelie's not. A wheelie shouldn't be. If your wheelie is constantly dynamic, uh, I would argue that you're not doing it right. You're using that pedal power to keep that thing going and you don't want to do that. So I think that's the biggest thing that I want to get out right in front. And, you know, somebody even today talked about on the drops, you know, Hey, they said, Hey, when, when would I use your method? And when would I use a manual method? And I still haven't answered that one because I'm trying to formulate it in my mind because what I want to just say point blank is I, I, I won't say I never manual off any sort of a drop, but I rarely ever manual off of a drop. That's just not something that I would normally do. So there's a, there's a big difference between the two. Now, um, a manual is something that I think is very difficult and it takes strength. Uh, you, you have to be a strong person and you have to be able to really like drive the bike down with your heels and use your hamstrings, your glutes and your lower back to, to keep the bike up and, and move your hips. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a lot of work. It really is. And I think the, the issue with the manual in relation to the wheelie is there's so much more going on. So it would be great if you could get in a position doing a manual where it was, it was static. Like I could get back and stay right there, keep my hip crease fixed, keep my arms where they are. But for me, that's nearly impossible. And I was talking with Rob about this last night. When I do a manual, I'm very far forward on the bike in comparison to a lot of other people. Most people get their hips, their butt way back and get that fulcrum point or that balance point. Uh, or lever way back. And I think that's a better way to do it, but it's just, it's really hard for me. And I'm trying to do that a lot. Um, now I think with a, a wheelie, it's much different. And one of the biggest things is 
again, it's not as dynamic and it's much easier to manage. Um, the manual can go wrong very quickly. Um, you really got to be dynamic when you fire it back. When you're doing a wheelie, I think if you really get used to using your torso, you could pop the bike up and find where that balance point is. And that is something that I really hope came across in that video. And I tried to do it when I was breaking down step one on the bike. So probably halfway through. What I tried to do was get up, get the bike up, and then just kind of find that balance point without pedaling. So if you bring in enough speed and fire your torso back, you can find that point. So that might be the first way for you to play with it is just get the front end up, get that front tire up and see if you can find that balance point and maybe use a little bit of rear brake. Now it's gonna be up to, to each of you to figure out what way works best or what method works best. But uh, I would definitely say find an uphill slope, a slight uphill slope, because that makes it the easiest thing to do where you can just start to roll up and think about getting that balance point. Now you're probably going to have flat pedals on so you can get your feet off. The other piece to this is you have to relax. And it was funny because Rob and I got into a little conversation about this. And, um, he was just saying, kind of basically saying I was being too hard on people because my contention was if people listened and did what I said, they would be able to wheelie. And yeah, of course, it's it's easy for me to say that. Um, it's it's way easier said than done, and and I get it. And I think to provide some context too, it's kind of like jumping. I was very specific on the jump video to explain to people I've been jumping a bike since I was probably seven, and. I've had a lot of experience jumping a bike. So a, a lot of those, a lot of those situations I'm comfortable with it. When I pop up into a wheelie, I, I know where that balance point is. And if something's not right, I'm okay grabbing a little bit of brake. But a lot of people, they come up and they start to go too far back and they just hammer on that brake. It takes a while to get comfortable with that. I started doing wheelies when I was seven, eight years old. I mean, I had a little tiny pit bike and it was a, a, a coaster brake bike and I would just cruise through and, and do wheelies on that all over the place. And it, it's something that, you know, Austin just said it, it took him forever to feel, figure out wheelies. And I mean, Austin's a high level rider. He's a really good rider. And it's just, it's not something that comes naturally to everybody, but I really think this is one of those elements that it's like a light switch. When it happens, it happens and you just go, whoa, man, that makes perfect sense. Now I have it. And I think it's it's just a feel. Like it's a it's a it's something you feel in your palms when it happens. You just you know it. You know what that balance point is. And uh then it's just it's way easier from there because then you start playing around with it, you get more comfortable. Um, as you're carrying more speed, you can fire your torso back and get the thing up uh, when you're moving pretty quickly. And it's fun. It's just, it's really, really fun to do wheelies. And I think, you know, finding a spot that's comfortable might be the best thing to do. And getting really comfortable in that spot is 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 probably the best way to go about it. Now, Andreas asked, uh, can I go from a wheelie to a manual? <laughs> uh, I can. It's, it's it's difficult. Um, there's actually the street I live on. If I come back this way from downtown, <laughs> it's pretty cool because it goes out of downtown and drops down. And what I try to do is manual down that as long as I can and then up the other side. And it's funny because I gen I don't generally go into a wheelie and then drop into a manual. I try to manual and I just come too far into the bike and end up doing like a seated wheelie. And then I push it back out into a manual. So it's hard. It's really, it's really difficult. Um, it's something that it takes a while to get to. It's kind of like landing in a manual. It's just, it's really difficult. It's a really, it's a really odd thing. It's a really foreign feeling, but the wheelie starts that way too. You know, it's, it's one of those things. It's hard for me to remember not being able to wheelie because ever since I was young, I would just wheelie all the way down the street. And I remember being seven, eight, nine years old and hanging with my brother who was seven years older. And, you know, he, 
they would have wheelie contests and he would throw me in and, and just say, dude, you better go beat all these guys. <laughs> and uh, I guess that pressure is what forced me to, to become pretty proficient at the uh, wheelie. And it's funny back then, you know, riding a bike that was a rigid single speed bike with a coaster brake, you know, you want to talk about difficult to wheelie that, that is it. And it was funny because when we were in Sedona, we came rolling through Rob and I, and I think it might've been on Saturday and all of a sudden we're in this crowd of people and I, I really wasn't sure what was going on. So I kind of look around and uh, I realize it's a, it's a wheelie contest. Like, ah, I'm not going to get, get into this. And we're right in the middle. There's people everywhere, like a hundred people on the side. And uh, yeah, Rocco was there. <laughs> and so I kind of wheelie, I tried to do a one handed wheelie through on my, uh, my Da Vinci and everybody's like, boo, boo. And uh, can you get me that bubble water? And uh, so <laughs> I realized what was happening. They had, it was a transition. Um, the transition people were doing this wheelie contest and they had this bootleg old clunker. And uh, they're like, yeah, dude, go for it. You know, you, you got to wheelie this thing. And so I hopped on and, you know, I, I jumped on it and I, I gave it a halfway decent effort. And I was walking it back and somebody said, like, you didn't go far enough. And I, got, well, I didn't know I was supposed to go far. And they're like, yeah, you know, the, the, the leader's down there. And I thought, I don't really care about this. And this dude pops out of the crowd with this, like, patterned flower shirt on and kind of peacocks his feathers up a little bit and was like, you know, you can't touch me or something. And I was like, whoa, bro, you're going to come at me like that. Give me that bike back. And uh, I hopped on that bike and I went farther than him. And then so he jumped on and he went further. And so I jumped on and went further. <laughs> and they kept having to go further out and move people away. And so this dude jumps on and, and he's doing it stand up mode, which is just out of, it's insane. I, I don't, I was, just, I couldn't believe it. And he went further. And so I went to this girl that was running the whole thing. And I told her, Hey, go out there and, and move all those people. And <laughs> she looks at me and she goes, how far down? And I looked at her and I said, all the way, I'm going to go all the way. And <laughs> she looked at me for a second and she turned around and she told her, but get out of the way. And uh, I went back and it was like, dude, you think you got him? And I'm like, no, I don't think I got him. I know. I know I got him. And uh, man, I, I threw that thing up and I rode by him and I gave him one of these and just kept on going. And I went as far as I could possibly go. I almost wheeled into Curtis Keene at the Specialized Tent. It was, it was comedy. But you know, on a bike like that, you have no choice. You have to find the balance point and you have to be very comfortable with that balance point because I didn't have this thing. I had to use the uh the back you chatted with that guy for a bit he said yeah i think he used to live in bentonville i don't think he does anymore and nah there'd be no rematch there'd be no rematch that dude rocco that guy ain't beating me dude all out willy him just out of principle man um he it was funny too because we did that game of bike the next day and he was kind of creeping around that uh, watching that. And it was just, uh, it was funny. The guy had some skill, man, the, the stand up wheelie dude. Yeah. I was, I was, I was thoroughly impressed, but again, it comes back to the, uh, the technique, you know, when you have the time and you're comfortable with what it feels like when you're going too far. Um, I think that that really helps. Now, once you get to that point, so we're going to assume that everybody gets comfortable with that. The next question uh, or the next issue I think that pops up is the uh, the side to side thing. And again, my my opinion on that is the side to side comes from being too tight. So when you lift the bike up, but your arms are super rigid, if anything starts to happen, you just go like that with it. So like if you fire your arms back and you fire one back sooner than the other and your your arms are really tight, you'll probably start listing to the left or to the right either way. When you get the front front of the bike up, you can do this. You can move the bike side to side. Uh, you just got to make sure that you keep the slack out of your arms. That's that I think is one of the major issues. And then relaxing your hips a little bit. It's just it's it's this strange dynamic that um, yeah, some people I always fall to the right, never to the left. Um, 
you know, it could be you're, if you're right-handed and you're very right side dominant, you're really pushing hard on that right pedal. That may be it. So that might be a situation where if you really try to use your torso instead of your legs to get the power, that might help. And the other thing you need to think about is do it at the same time. So one thing that I've seen in people's videos is they go, okay, I'm going to use my torso. And what they'll do is they'll come in like this and they'll drop their torso down and they'll wait a second. Then they'll fire their torso back. Don't do that. Make it dynamic. So come in, fire your torso down, fire your torso back. It's the same thing we talk about in the ride series clinics. When people are trying to do technical lifts, what some of them will do is they'll come in loaded up and then try to fire back. I always try to program that out of people because I want you to come in like this, torsos up, forward, back, forward, back. Always try to make it dynamic. Um, it's kind of like the one, two, three when you're doing the drops. I like to come into a drop standing tall and then drop down into the one and then immediately go into the two. The more you can make those things very close together or barely blend together, I think the better it is. So something to, to maybe try if you're getting it to the side, but do you start to apply the brake? Um, it, I generally don't apply the, the brake. Rick asked a great question, but I wouldn't say don't, you know, try it. Whatever works for you. Uh, there's going to be a lot of nuance with this. I, I just think you got to figure out what works for you. And if using the brakes helps you get the front wheel up and find a balance point, dude, I say, I say do it. Um, and, and the more, the quicker you can be comfortable using the rear brake, the better it's going to be. Uh, and that is a very, very important thing because you don't want to fall backwards, but the brakes are really powerful. I mean, you can get the bike super high up. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen some of these wheelie videos. Some of these dudes are just out of control what they're able to do. Uh, it's unbelievable. So to, to be in a situation where you can give just a tiny little bit of input on that brake, that's something that is going to be a game changer. And that's kind of the, the next tier up. So once you get comfortable getting up into the wheelie, then you're going to start working that, that rear brake. And it's a situation where <clears throat> the, more, the more you play around with it, the better it's going to be, the more comfortable you're going to be modulating that finger. And that's why I tried to show everybody getting the bike up. This is multifaceted. So when I was going down the hill and I got the bike up and was trying to roll down and balance, I wanted to show two things. I wanted to show it's the balance point. Okay. It wasn't, I wouldn't call that a seated manual. I would call that a non-pedaling wheelie. I mean, you can look at it either way, but the idea was to show you if you find a balance point and you're going downhill, you have inertia. All you need to do is just apply a tiny bit of brake. And in that situation, it's ever so slight what the inputs are. Because if you do too much input, you're either going to drop the front or you got to pedal to keep it back up. So the braking piece is something that's going to come in after I think you're comfortable with the balance point. But again, it's going to take, it's going to take some time. Um, and it, yeah, if it helps, you know, that's, that's one of those things, definitely feathering it, the more comfortable you can get feathering it, um, the better it's going to be for you. And I would say record yourself. You know, that's one thing that, that might help is, you know, take the time you can buy a cheap tripod or you can have somebody hold a camera and have them go from the side and make sure they get a wide enough shot where you can see the initial part of trying to get the front of the bike up and see what it looks like. You know, that'll give you a good idea. You can do it from the side. Um, you can do it from the back or do it from the front. And so that'll give you the idea of where you're going left or right if you're having those problems. And <clears throat> it'll get there. You know, what I'll have to say, if you're doing the same thing over and over, try something else. So this is where you got to be kind of analytical and you got to be real with yourself. If it's not working, you're doing something wrong. Make a change. And that change might be worse but it might be better and it might take you to a spot where it's getting a little bit better. Now, Brian mentioned panic braking, dude, I totally get it. A lot of people do that. That's why I think the best thing might be just to find a spot where you can throw your, your torso back way too far and have the bike go over backwards and throw your feet out and stand up. So do that a couple times, 
then start finding the balance point. So pull just enough where you're not going past the balance point, then you can start to think about the brakes. So slowly, slowly build into that. Yeah, if you can't, like you say, if you can't see yourself doing it, it's really hard to know what you're doing. It's funny, when we do the ride series clinics, we record everybody in 240 frames per second. And after we explain what to do, and we go through and we demo it and the whole group comes through and, and they do it. And we start giving feedback. It's funny because we have a decent amount of people that go, um, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm certain of it. And so then we, we bring them over and we show them the video and they go, ah, yeah, I'm not anywhere near to doing what you're doing. So it's just, it's funny what you feel like you're doing and what you're actually doing. In a lot of instances, they're two very different things. So I think if you understand that, it'll make it a little bit easier um, when you're trying to get that. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, that's a, a funny thing. Teddy is saying, saw you on all American when you were trying to gap that at the bottom. Um, yeah. The videos, man, I'm, it's one thing that we're trying to do here. And it's funny, I was writing it down. I've been making all this notes with Sarah about what sort of content we can do now. And cause things are, are kind of different. So um, we're going to do this thing uh, called, let's explore. And so part of that's going to be going around and getting a bunch of POV of as many of the trails around here as possible, and then kind of add in some stuff where I can. So um, I have uh, some of the equipment is, is pretty cool here because um, I can take GoPros and like clamp them on things. And um, it's, yeah, it, it'll be pretty cool. You got to adapt <laughs> like right now. It's just crazy. Um, we can't shoot like we normally would. Um, you know, my man Brock's got a big family and, and he's the guy that, you know, he, he produces all the content. So without him, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So some of the stuff you're going to see coming up may not have that really cool production value, but it'll still be quality content. About dropping my hands. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You argue with the boxing coach about dropping your, you don't want to drop your hands. Those hands come down and pop, pop. You can catch it right in the face. So yeah, the, uh, the video piece of it is, is big. And so one thing I've been trying to do now is kind of transition into doing a lot more in the digital space. And it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. We can't do ride series clinics everywhere. Not everybody can get to Bentonville, Texas, or Phoenix. So what I, what I came up with was Patreon and um, offering a tier there where you can submit a video and you'll do two different angles. And what I'm able to do is, is break that video down and um, uh, use an app called Coach's Eye. And so what I can do is I can mark all, all over it and, and, and put notes on and show what your hip angles look like and, and add in all these things. And we can also do a, a split screen. So it'll be me wheeling, you wheeling, or, or you doing a lift, you doing a drop jump, whatever you want to do. And that'll be the opportunity then for me to give you all that direct feedback on what you're doing um, and then send that video back to you. So in light of everything that's been happening, I'm going to try to, to move more towards that end of things just because I don't know when we're going to be able to do the large form clinics again. And, uh, <laughs> and so yeah, that's a bummer for me because that's how I normally support my family. So I think we will be able to find a way to, uh, to make it happen. And I think it's going to be really cool because people will get, you know, you get a little bit more personal attention and um, you'll be able to, to very quickly, I think, make progress. You know, it's one thing for me to do or anybody to do a, a how-to, and even if it's a great how-to and you know what to do, if there's nobody there telling you, yes, you're doing it, but you need to do this a little more or that a little more, or no, you're not doing it. This is what's happening. If you don't have that, it's, it's pretty difficult. And Brian, um, Oh, I thought you were saying go do a, a Ledges video. Um, I did a Ledges video a while back, and it's been a long, long time. And uh, 
I'm going to have to get back out there. I've been trying to get the cross country legs back under me. And once I do that, uh, there's only 55 people on here. We can say it. One of the ideas I have for content and it's just, it's a bad idea. It's a really bad idea, but I think it'll be entertaining. And uh, some of you might know where I'm going with this. Uh, I'm going to start doing Strava KOM challenges. <laughs> so I'm going to train pretty hard and uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to make a list and I'm just going to start going out and trying to get a lot of these KOMs around here. So some of them will be short, some of them will be long. Like at one point in time, I think I had it on the ledges and I'll preface with, I, I really don't care anymore. Um, my eight pages of KOMs don't, they don't make me who I am. So um, I think it would be cool uh, to, to go back and just try to do it. Like some of them, um, they're just difficult. Like some of them are long, some of them hurt. That ledges, the whole thing, oh, dude, it's just brutal. But what I think is great about it is, especially for me, I am not a cross-country guy. <laughs> and Teddy said, I don't look like a cross-country guy. I never looked like a cross-country guy. Even when I rode pro cross-country, I was always just a little bit bigger. But I think what it goes to show you in the idea is a lot of it's technique. So even in a, a segment that could be five, eight, maybe even 15 minutes long, maybe even longer. Like I'm, I'm not going to limit it. I'll do some longer ones. I think it shows you that it's technique and in, in a cross country setting, the longer it is, I think to an extent, the more the technique is going to be valuable because think of all the turns, you know? So you have all these turns and if I can gain two tenths, three tenths, a half a second in some of those turns, I mean, that's going to add up. And, you know, there's a, a question right here. The coaches, you know, I know this is a wheelie or manual. What about turns, level pedals or outside foot down? It's funny. You ask me that question. I would say it's, it's not open to opinion. The answer is in physics and gravity. So on a flat turn, factually, based on physics and gravity, it's inside up, outside down. Um, if, if you ever have any sort of an issue and have to take a foot off, that's where you're going to end up. So my thing is, why not just start there and then you can weight that outside pedal. So yeah, I, I, I just, I don't think that one's open to interpretation on a flat turn. It's always inside pedal up outside pedal down. Now, when you get into doing berms, I mean, it's a little bit different. My simple answer is your pedals will be level when they can be level. Um, I go through a ton of berms and my pedals are not always level. Sometimes I have the inside up. Sometimes um, I have level. I mean, it's just, it's, it's weird. So um, <clears throat> uh, it's kind of, there's a lot of different ways to teach things right now. And, you know, some of them, I get it. Some of them, I don't like a lot of what, what Rob and I teach through the ride series. It's not really a matter of opinion. It's what we do. And it's, it's because of the physics and the gravity behind it. You know, you can't win an argument with those two things. So, uh, but everybody, again, everybody has their own opinions and the turning piece is, is part of it. And when we filmed this wheelie video immediately after we filmed a turning video. So my hope is we'll be able to get that turning video out next. Uh, we did it a little bit differently. And so I, I think that one's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty cool, but part of this content that we're going to be ramping up or more me just because of the way things are now is, is going to add in a lot of turns. So what you'll probably start seeing on the channel is some more, I guess we'll call them vignettes. So they will be a little bit smaller. Uh, <clears throat> we'll also put some stuff just on Patreon uh, and it'll be on trail. So like trail tips and we've been, I've been playing around with it. I've, I've, filmed a couple test ones. So there's a lot of spots around here where I normally ride that they're just, they're really cool spots with a ton of nuance. So I want to, I want to find ways to capture that nuance in that moment and get those out to everybody. Like, um, Teddy asked, he was getting bucked on a lot uh, of issues. Does it have to do with setup? You know, generally what I've seen that is not rebound is not the issue or, or I should say 
lack of rebound damping is not the issue. So what people generally do is put in too much rebound damping. It's too slow. I think it needs to be a little faster. The problem most people have when getting bucked is twofold. The first is their weight is generally too far back on the bike. Uh, relatively speaking, you want to have your hips over the bottom bracket as much as possible. So if you watch my jump videos, you'll see I'm generally over the bottom bracket as much as possible. Now, the other part of that, especially here, is there's a lot of jumps. But the takeoffs are short and super steep. It's a common misnomer, in my opinion, that shorter, smaller jumps are easier. I would agree that's completely backwards. The smaller, shorter, and steeper the jump is, the less time you as a rider have to deal with the dynamics that it's creating. If it's a longer ramp that's more subtle, you have way more time to deal with what it's doing to you. This is something that you're starting to see a little bit of a shift to it. At the Ride Series Skills Clinics, we use the MTB hoppers, and I have the Hopper Pro, and so people come out and they look at it and they go, dang, dude, this thing's massive. But when you hit it, they realize, wow, it just it feels good. It's really friendly. So <clears throat> that's something that I think uh, is more a factor of, of what's happening. So um, <clears throat> what about – so true, yeah, the short and steep jumps, Josh, dude, they're gnarly, and there's a couple of them out there. And what I want to do – is I, I'm going to go out and hit some of those. And we've done it a couple times and I'll film it from a few different angles uh, and I'll film it in 240 frames per second. And that'll, that'll let it come across a little bit more. It's layers. You can think of it as layers and nuance, like the jump video. That's a, that's a basic jump video. That's the basis of what you're doing when you're jumping. Now, as you progress, you have to start stacking things on top of it. And then I would say one of those next steps is hitting these really steep, um, short transition jumps. There's a, a rationale behind it. There's a technique behind it. And what you need to think about is it always comes back to dynamics. It's always the dynamics. You know, the wheelie part of it, that's what I tried to get across was really think about and analyze the dynamics of what you're trying to do. Okay, you're riding the bike like this, normally on flat ground. All you want to do is get like that. So you just have to find the point at which the bike is balancing like that. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out once you find that balance point, don't change anything. Don't move anything. Don't move your body. Don't move anything. You know, obviously you got to move your legs to keep the bike going, but if you keep them in a straight line, everything will theoretically be the same. Uh, with a jump, you know, you have to look at what is, what is the situation? What are you trying to do? And uh, E-Money said, can you do a tabletop and tail whip tutorial? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, would, I would love to do that. And that's definitely coming uh, down the line. We have a lot of that written out. And I'm hoping we can film it here in, uh, in a few months. And that's going to be a fun one. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I just I really want to make sure that I can get across on that that takes even more time. Like, like jumping takes a long time. And then you have to get to a point where you're really comfortable jumping to then start doing those things. So we're going to, we're going to do it. We're going to get there. We're going to do, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Um, I want to, I really want to keep this going in as many formats as we can and do as much as we can. And man, I got this huge list of ideas of things that I want to do and companies that I can get involved to do it. Um, you know, it's funny. Farentino wrote the ability to wheelie is genetic. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I can argue with that. Uh, I think potentially the potential to do a long wheelie is genetic. Um, I, I've wheelied I've wheelied probably three quarters of a mile before, and that's difficult. Like, there's not a whole lot of people that can wheelie three quarters of a mile. I want to do a mile, and I have a spot where I think that I can make a mile happen, but it's just difficult. And nobody needs to wheelie three quarters of a mile. There's just there's a half mile a quarter. You don't need to. Um, a nice, cool little wheelie in front of your friends, and then boom, drop it down. Uh, I think that's pretty legit, but. Uh, there's some genetics that I think come into play. There's uh, there's background, there's history, you know, um, are you, 
Are you an athlete? You know, that's a, that's a great example. Like let's take genetics out of it. And let's say if you grew up as a soccer player, then you have really good lateral mobility. You have a really good understanding of where your hips are in space. Um, if you were, if you have a CrossFit background and you did any sort of, of dynamic, um, weightlifting movements, when you come through a ride series clinic, you are by nature an easy, you're an easier person to coach because you understand where your hips are, you know, what's happening. So I think, I think that plays into it a lot. You know, I didn't start racing BMX till I was five, almost six. <clears throat> but I was always running around doing different things. I played baseball. I played football. I was a very athletic kid. And I think that that helped when you bring all those factors in. Like somebody who, who just rode uh, BMX, just raced BMX at a very high level. I think they have the ability to be an amazing bike rider. Any domain riding bikes, they would be amazing. Now, if you take somebody who's really good at BMX but they did another sport like gymnastics or soccer or, or any of those basketball, even that would add another layer into their ability, especially if they did it when they were young, because their proprioception, basically understanding where their body is in space, that's a huge benefit. And so many people, they don't understand that. Like when I started racing cross country, I was a really strong dude, but I was huge. I was like 195 pounds and it gave me the ability to do things. And it still does on the bike that other people can't do. A strong person is a strong person. So if you're super athletic and a strong individual, that's, I think an advantage. Now it depends on what you're doing. If, if you're on a road bike, you know, power to weight is, is the big thing on a mountain bike. I don't think, especially in enduro, it's, it's not the same. And here's a prime example. Look at Richie Root. The dude is a linebacker. He's massive. You know, he's 5'11", 200 plus pounds. He's one of the best riders in the world. You think that dude's not powerful? Power is power. How you use that power and how you apply that power, you know, that's where the advantages come in. And I think <laughs> the point I was getting to was um, being able to learn a wheelie and do a wheelie I think some of it would come back to athleticism. If you are an athletic individual, I think you're going to be in a situation or a position where you might get it a little bit earlier than some other people. And, you know, what's great about that is you can always become more athletic. You know, another piece of content that we're going to do out in the garage gym is some training. You know, you don't need to get crazy at all. You just need to do a few different things. It's simple. There's, there's, uh, a, a, a push with your leg, so a quad dominant leg movement, a hip hinge or like a deadlift, a pull for scapper traction, a press, and some midline stability. That's it. There's really not much else. I mean, you can do some curls if you want, but um, you'll notice it. Like a lower core workout, doing wheelies, definitely. You're going to fire your torso back. To fire your torso back is a lot of the things that you can't see. So they call the back the reverse chain. So as a bike rider, if you ask me, what's, what are the most important muscles to have as a, a bike rider? They're all of the ones you can't see in the mirror. It's, um, it's traps, it's, it's scapula, it's uh, erectors, lower back, it's glutes, it's hamstring. All of that stuff is incredibly important. And part of it, you know, do a long wheelie. You, you try to do a long wheelie, you get, you know, a couple minutes into a wheelie, it hurts. Like you're, you're trying to hold yourself up, your arms are going to get tired. Uh, there's a lot of strength that plays into that. So <clears throat> you definitely have to keep trying. Like Nick says, keep trying the reps, the feel. Um, yeah, it's just, it's reps over and over and over again. So, so yeah, um, 44 minutes we're coming up on, uh, yeah, everything's core. You call it midline, the cool in the CrossFit world. They call it midline, you know, cores, that's nineties, man. It's, it's midline now. That's the, uh, that's the new one. So I told myself I would limit this to 45 minutes, but, uh, I could keep going. This was, this was super fun. Um, <clears throat> I want to do more of these, uh, just in general, I've been thinking about it and with things being how they are and, uh, and people wrapped up and, and kind of, you know, quarantined to try to get through this coronavirus. Uh, I think we're, we're going to do it. And, and what I love about this platform is it's, it's global. You know, we get to speak to people all over the world. So um, give me some feedback. Give me some input. What do you want 
You know, what, what, what would you like me to talk about? I, I can talk about a ton of different things. Uh, I'm open to talk about a lot of different things. Um, there's other platforms we're going to use too. So uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram at the rich Drew, please follow that. Cause I want to do some more Instagram lives. My brother and I do one on every Thursday evening and I want to do more now. And I've reached out to quite a few people, some really cool people with a lot to add. And I'm going to try to, to stretch it out a little bit. I uh, <clears throat> I shared a Facebook Live from my athlete page, so Rich Drew on Facebook, from two years ago with a guy named Sam Nix. And um, he's a strength training coach. The guy's a savant. He's just a legend, mad scientist. And it was amazing, that hour-plus video. And I reached out to him, and I'm hoping here next – I'm hoping next week I can try to get him on an Instagram live to talk a little bit about training because it's absolutely amazing. So, um, <clears throat> e-money, I see you, man. June 2nd to 6th. I sure hope so, dude. I hope we're to the point where we're past this. Um, anybody out there who's watching, if you're going to come to Bentonville, I'd love it. You know, let me know. We, uh, it, it's kind of a bummer that this hit cause we were talking about doing some Oz trail experiences and, uh, I, I still want to do those. You know, this place is incredible. The uh, the trails, there's so many of them. There's so much different stuff to ride. So uh, I would love to put together an event where, you know, we're talking three, four, maybe five days, uh, just all in. Like we have great places for people to stay. We can take you all the awesome spots, uh, have some great food, and just ride all the great trails while we do some skill work. So keep your eyes peeled because that is going to be coming soon. And it's going to be an absolute blast. I guarantee it. So. I'm going to end this. Uh, I'm all fired up now. I'm going to make some more notes based on this. So uh, please, I'll get him to talk more about Clipless. Yeah, Rob uh, Rob and I will do some more. The guy, man, he's talking about a wealth of information. Uh, he's just not much for personality. That's where I come in. So I got to I gotta be, uh, <laughs> I, I got to try to rein him in a little bit. So um, yeah, everybody stay safe. You know, keep your physical distancing. And let's get through this thing. Stay happy. Stay positive. Any opportunity you have to try to make somebody smile, just, you know, try to do it. Uh, I think that's what we need more of now. And uh, it, it's happening. So uh, have a great weekend. It's Friday, I think. So, yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Go enjoy it. Get out, ride a little bit, and uh, well, have fun. So peace out, dumpers. And I'll tell you soon what that means. <laughs>